here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. The first mention of two sound takes us to Leviticus chapter 25, verse 9. And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee, seven times seven years. And the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. And ye shall hallow the fiftieth year, and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. So what is sounding is the trumpet of jubilee. Now I'll point out that jubilee has six letters, and notice how jubilee has bile in it. So we know bile is a liquid produced by your liver which helps you to digest fat. But look at definition number three. Bile is anger or bitterness towards someone or something. So this trumpet of the Jubilee is sounding on the 10th day. So think of the 10 commandments, the law of the seventh month. Think of the seventh day where God ceased from his works. And Hebrews 4 talks about how we cease from our own works and we enter into his rest. That seven represents the rest that we have for our souls in Jesus Christ. And in Revelation, there are seven trumpets that are sounding. And this is the day of atonement. To atone for, or the noun atonement. Okay, to atone for something is to make amends for it so i know i was very late yesterday but i promise to atone for that i promise to do something nice for you so that you can forget the thing that i've done wrong okay so to atone is to compensate for something bad that you've done so it's interesting that that word atonement is only found one time in the new testament and it takes us to romans 5 verse 11 let's start in verse 8 but god commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners christ died for us much more than being now justified by his blood we shall be saved from wrath through him for if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. So the Lord Jesus Christ is our atonement, in the blood that he shed on the cross for our sins, that is how we have forgiveness with God. That is how we are justified by faith in His blood. We cannot atone for our sins by our own righteousness, by our own works. Only through Jesus Christ have we received the atonement. We read in Ezekiel 33, verse 3 through 5, If when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet, and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. I'm here to tell you today that the trumpet is sounding. Do you hear the sound of the trumpet? Will you take heed and will you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ? Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Do you hear the warning? Colossians 1, 27 through 28. 
to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. The Word of God says the law made nothing perfect. We are presented perfect in Christ Jesus. So the trumpet of the Jubilee is sounding. This is the day of atonement. A day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day. And this trumpet is sounding throughout all the land. The Lord Jesus said in Mark 14, 9, Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Jesus said to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel unto every creature. Romans 10, 15-18 And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. So this trumpet of jubilee that is being sounded is the word of God, the King James Bible, and all the elect of God who are preaching the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Notice in that word atonement that tone is in it. There is a certain tone to this trumpet that is being sounded. And God commands us to proclaim liberty throughout all the land. Isaiah 61 verse 1, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. And Revelation 22 says that Satan is bound for a thousand years. So again, this is the day of atonement, the day of the Lord which is as a thousand years. And the Lord is sounding this trumpet through His elect, proclaiming liberty to the captives. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. All right, the second mention of two sound takes us to 1 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 19. Let's start in verse 16. And David spake to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren to be the singers with instruments of music, psalteries and harps and cymbals, sounding by lifting up the voice with joy. So the Levites appointed Heman, the son of Joel, and of his brethren Asaph, the son of Berechiah, and of the sons of Merari, their brethren, Ethan the son of Cushiah, and with them their brethren of the second degree, Zechariah, Ben, Haziel, Shemaramoth, and Jehiel, and Unai, and Eliab, and Benaniah, and Maasiah, and Mattathiah, and Eliphalah, and Milkaniah, and Obadom, and Jael the porters. So the singers Heman, Asaph, and Ethan were appointed to sound with cymbals of brass. So notice that they were sounding by lifting up the voice with joy. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1 says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or tinkling cymbal. So if one does not have charity, they have become as sounding brass. Now Paul says that some preach Christ of love and others preach of contention. We find that in Philippians 1, 16-17. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. 
The third mention of two sound takes us to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 10. So anytime again you see that number 10, think of the law, the Ten Commandments. Let's start in verse 6. From which some, having swerved, have turned aside unto vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor where they affirm. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. So as you well know, the gospel of Jesus Christ is being sounded. The free gift, not of works lest any man should boast. The goodness of God which leads men to repentance. But then there are those that desire to be teachers of the law and they don't understand what they're saying and they're just vain jangling those symbols of brass that don't have charity. And they are also sounding their words and they are preaching the law, but not as a schoolmaster. They're not using the law lawfully. They're using the law to exalt themselves and to try to justify themselves. Whereas I believe the elect of God use the law lawfully, meaning they understand its purpose and its intention to show us our sin and that we are naked and we have sinned against God and to give us knowledge of sin as Romans 3 says so that we will exalt Christ instead of ourselves and we will trust Christ instead of ourselves. Revelation 8 And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded. And there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth. And the third part of trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. And the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, so as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Whoa! 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 To the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound! All right, the sixth and final mention of two sound 
takes us to Revelation chapter 10, verse 7. Let's start in verse 5. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth, lifted up his hand to heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that therein are, and the earth and the things that therein are, and the sea and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he had declared to his servants the prophets. So he says that there should be time no longer. Look at Galatians 3, 23-25. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. 1 Peter 4, 2 says that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. So remember, in the first mention of two sound, the Lord was causing this trumpet of the jubilee to sound throughout all the land, and it was in the tenth day of the seventh month. Now here we are in Revelation chapter 10, verse 7. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. Now that phrase, the mystery of God, is only found in one other place. It's mentioned two times in the word of God. And that takes us to Colossians chapter 2, verse 2. That their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father, and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So he says, the mystery of God should be finished. Now that phrase, be finished, is also mentioned two times in the Word of God. One time here in Revelation 10, verse 7, and the other time in Daniel chapter 12, verse 7. So both be in verse 7, that seventh trumpet that is sounding. The mystery of God being finished. Jesus said, it is finished. In James, he says, sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Look at verse 6. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, times, and in half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand.